Hi, Olivia the Ostrich. Hello, Fuchsia Fish. Can you believe that ladies here in America couldn't vote until the year 1920? Doesn't that blow your bubbles? Oh, well, this should blow your bubbles. What? Well, in England, where I'm from, since I'm a classically trained actress from the Royal Academy, yeah, yeah, we all know. Anyway, uh, in England, if you were a lady, you were not allowed to vote officially until 1928. Wow! So we got it, what was that, eight years beforehand? Yes, exactly. And before that, ladies, oh, oh, hello, storyteller. <laughs> Oh, hey, sorry, Tala, what's up? Hell, well, I was just going to say that before uh, the 1920s, when we all got to vote in England and in the U.S., the ladies like Susan B. Anthony, that lady right there, that lady right there, she and her other friends, the suffragists, were fighting hard to get the vote for ladies. Suffragette, you said? Yes, yes. Y you know, in fact, uh, Fisher Fish, do you mind getting me that notebook over there? That one over there? Yes, please. Okay, you got it. Are you going to teach us something, storyteller? Well, you know me, I always like to show you something new. Here you go. Okay, you see that word suffrage? Yes, yes, I know what it means, I know, I know! What does it mean, Olivia? It means the right to vote. Exactly. Now, flip up the page, why don't you? Oh, oh, oh ex exciting. Let's see here. Uh, uh, the old beak isn't what it used to be. Uh, oh, a new word. Suffragette! Oh, what does that mean? Well, that means that those were the ladies who were fighting for the right to vote. And how would they fight? Organization, well, you know what? Let's read the book and find out because when uh, a certain famous lady, suffragette, tried to vote, you know what happened? The, somebody's bubbles got all in a knot! Oh, they sure did and she might have ended up behind bars! Oh. How exciting! Oh, female history! Let's hit it! I love learning about democracy. Here I go. All right, and here I go. Suffrage, suffragette, hearts on fire! Why are the hearts on fire? Whose hearts are on fire? Let's find out. Susan B. Anthony, there she is, votes for president. But not when she was allowed to vote for president. Rochester, New York, November 1st, 1872. Remember, I said the ladies could not vote in the U.S. until 1920. But this is, what, what, how many years before? Almost 50 years before then. 1872. Four days to the presidential election. Register now, the morning paper said. Susan B. Anthony jumped up to grab her purse and wrap. Oh, that's a very lovely place she's got there. Roaring fireplace, a nice cup of tea probably, although I prefer to be a giant latte myself. But there she is. She's about to go and vote, but why is she going to go vote? She knows she can't vote. Out the door and down the street she flew. Her sisters Hannah and her friend Mary hoisted their skirts to keep up. Women couldn't be equal to men if they did not vote. Miss Anthony's heels faster and faster. Okay, everybody watching her go by, they know she's an important and famous woman in America. At the voter registration office, she marched in like a gust of wind. This was the moment Miss Anthony had dreamed of for so long. She demanded the right to vote. The inspectors looked up. Hmm, shocked, confused. Only men could sign up to vote, not women who owned property, paid taxes, held a job, or raised children. No woman was allowed to cast a vote. Outrageous! Unbelievable! True! Oh, as you can see, the sun is starting to come out, so my pages are going to be somewhat unevenly lit. Forgive me. Let's go on. Now, Miss Anthony believed that women did have the right to vote because of a new law, the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. It said that all persons born in the United States have the same rights as citizens, she told the men. Wasn't she a person? A citizen? Ha! Huh, she is indeed. It's a very large book, so you'll see me shifting back and forth a little bit. Now, the inspectors scratched their heads. They argued, yes, Miss Anthony's right debated. No, women can't vote. And they disagreed. Finally, one man said, sign here. It was done. Miss Anthony had registered to vote. Oh, so this fellow right here is taking a risk right alongside Miss Anthony. Election day, November 5th, 1872. Remember, it's still almost 50 years before people can vote. 
up at dawn. I mean, people, you know, who are women. Up at dawn, Miss Anthony raced to the polls at 7 a.m. sharp. Lighting the match, Miss Anthony cast her vote. Psh, throwing more Tinder, 15 other women voted too. I guess they voted with matches back then. That night, before she slept, she wrote to her good friend, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. That's another famous suffragette. Well, I have gone and done it. Miss Anthony had voted for president. Ah but wait, trouble was simmering. This is like a novella. All right. Here we go. You know what? I'm just going to zoom in on this page and we'll zoom back and forth. That's that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. It'll be easier for you to follow along too, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I can see better now. Excellent, Fuchsia Fish. The Deputy Federal Marshal stepped into the parlor. Oh no, what's happening? What does he want? You know, it's bad news probably, right? What had he come for? He took off his beaver hat. Hmm, that's nice. Beaver. To arrest you! he said, turning red. Miss Anthony held out her hands. Look at that. I demand that I should be arrested properly. But he would not handcuff a lady. No, he wouldn't. At the federal office downtown, she saw her sisters, her friends who voted, even the men who let them vote. They'd all been arrested too. <gasps> the charge? Voting without having the lawful right to vote. Then she was sent home to wait. To wait for what? What's happening? Let's move over and find out. In January, the news got worse. Miss Anthony must pay $1,000 or go to jail until her trial. Outrageous. Unbelievable. True. When her lawyer paid the bail, Miss Anthony was angry. She didn't want to give the court a dime. Her trial was set for spring. Hmm. $1,000. Back then, oh my gosh, if you think $1,000 is a lot now, kid... Back then, it was a fortune. Well, as you can imagine, news of her arrest spread like wildfire, even though there was no internet. The fury was sparked. That lady has done no wrong, wrote one reporter, and applause. Female lawlessness, another declared. Miss Anthony knew she was right. Without the vote, women had no say. In laws, in government, in the future, to her, voting was everything. Failure was everything impossible. She cut out stories out of every newspaper to save. I wonder why. I guess to chart her progress, right? I mean, if you were in the paper, wouldn't you cut out your article and save it in a scrapbook? Yes, you would. I mean, I would. All right. Now I'm opening it up again. Why? Because this is a really cool picture and I want you to see it. Oh, the light is everywhere today, isn't it? But I can't fault sunshine. I love sunshine. Winter, spring, 1873. Remember, her trial is set for the spring. As the trial drew closer, she took to the roads to argue her case. Oh, look at that. By buggy, by train. Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Chicago, towns large and small. A hundred people in one hamlet came out in a fierce snowstorm to hear her speak. Is it a crime for a citizen of the United States to vote? She demanded to know. Many <coughs> clapped for her. Some weren't so sure. A few hiss and shook their heads. It was a crime for a woman to vote. She must face the consequences. But she was stirring hearts and minds everywhere, wasn't she? Doing it peacefully and intelligently through dialogue. June 17th, 1873. The Ontario County Courthouse, Canandaigua, New York. Oh my gosh. I should have practiced that beforehand. Canandaigua. Okay, let's just say Ontario County Courthouse, New York. New York. Not a seat was empty when Miss Anthony strode into the courtroom in her new, oh, lovely silk bonnet. People had come from miles away, congressmen, newspaper reporters, curiosity seekers, friends. How proud she looked. Did she know this was a trial no woman could win? No one could hear her burning heart pounding, but she could. The United States versus Susan B. Anthony. Miss Anthony's lawyer defended her. I advise her that she was as lawful a voter as I am, or as any other man is. The prosecutor attacked. If she is a woman and she voted, and voting by women is against the law, then she is guilty. Well, they both make strong points. Let's see which way the court goes. The judge had heard enough. He pulled a paper from his pocket. 
The 14th Amendment gives no right to a woman to vote, he read out loud, and the voting by Miss Anthony was in violation of the law. He told the jury to find her guilty. The greatest outrage history has ever witnessed, she wrote in her journal that night. <gasps> it is unjust. The next day, the judge asked, Do you have anything to say? Miss Anthony rose to her feet. Yes, Your Honor, I have many things to say. You have trampled underfoot every vital principle of our government. My natural rights, my civil rights, my political rights, my judicial rights are all alike ignored. The crowd <gasps> inhaled. The prosecutor mm. tightened his lips. The judge <laughs> banged his gavel. The court cannot allow the prisoner to go on. But her heart was on fire. No one could stop her. The prisoner must sit down, roared the judge. She spoke louder still, but it was no use. The trial was over. Miss Anthony was found guilty. The judge ordered her to pay $100 plus court costs. Do you know how expensive that is? You know, this light is getting out of hand, isn't it? Oof. Let me see what I can do here. Because, wow, can you even see that book anymore? It is so crazy the way the light changes around here. All right, let's try something new. How about that? Can you see now? Different light, but oh, we can see much better now. Yeah, sorry about that, kid. Sometimes that happens, you know? The light suddenly changes on me and boom. But you know, technical difficulties or not, we gotta keep going with the flow, right? It's life. It's show business. The show must go on. <sighs> but here, the show is over. The trial was over. Miss Anthony was found guilty. The judge ordered her to pay $100 plus court costs. Outrageous! Unbelievable! True. She had one more thing to say. May it please your honor, Miss Anthony said, I shall never pay a dollar of your unjust penalty. And Susan B. Anthony never did. How about that? And now what does it say here? We got some more factoids here. But this was an actual true story. Isn't that amazing? The things that she underwent. But it's cool. As you think about it, a woman actually voted in the presidential election in 1872. Now, Susan B., B is for Brownell, Anthony, hoped to claim her rights as a citizen under the 14th Amendment because it didn't say men or women. It was just said, it just said citizens of the United States. Everyone could vote. Now, the new amendment was one of three adopted by Congress after the Civil War to give freedom and citizenship to black Americans. Now, she believed that this 14th Amendment granted full citizenship to women, too, not just black Americans. But as you can see, a lot of people disagreed. Now, she knew that her vote might be challenged. So she did. But, but you know, she and she knew that she broke along when she was voting, but she didn't expect to be arrested. I never dreamed of the U.S. officers persecuting me for voting, she wrote in a letter. After losing the trial, she asked Congress to lift her hundred dollar fine. Now, she never paid or went to jail, but they never removed that fine either. FYI, in 1875, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the 14th Amendment did not did not protect the right of women to vote. So that's when Miss Anthony, instead of trying to make the 14th Amendment work for her, decided to create a brand new, and push for a brand new amendment, the one that would be known as the 19th Amendment, to guarantee all American women the right to vote. Year after year, Congress refused to pass the law. Well, she fought her whole life for equal rights for women. She and her friend that you saw in the book, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, founded the National Woman Suffrage Association. Remember that word, right? Suffrage? It means the right to vote for all people? Well, she kept working and spreading the message everywhere she went. Women must have a purse of her own, she wrote, because she carried around a large alligator purse. That's pretty funny. Now. Let's see, Anthony never gave up. At her 86th birthday celebration in Washington, D.C., she remained determined. 86 years old, she declared, failure is impossible. Now, she died in 1906 before, before the 19th Amendment was finally passed by Congress allowing all women to vote. 
in that November, August 18, 1920, after that amendment was passed, 26 million women cast their vote for president. And that is one heart on fire. Oh my, I am so moved by the story. What happened to Fuchsia Fish? Oh, I, I think she went for a snack or something. No, oh, that's too bad. Well, frankly, I think she fell in the kerfuffle over the light and, well, you know, got to move on. I agree, we have to move on. But hearts on fire. We learned so much about Susan B. Anthony. Uh, did, did you know that she, that, that a lady had actually voted for president before it was legal? No, I didn't. Did you, kid? I, I've learned so much. And, and did you know that women in England got to vote eight years after American women? Yes, it's been a process and other countries followed suit, but many years later, it's taken a while. Yes, yes, but progress and equality for all is inevitable, especially when you believe in the freedom of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all. I agree. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, kid, see you next time on Kid Time Story Time, and keep your heart on fire.